Oh, the gain, the voltage two over the voltage Vs. Yeah, so this is the gain of the amplifier, which is different from the gain of the circuit. So once, so this th this is what the amplifier provides you, but once you connect resistors to it, you're gonna observe a different gain. For this particular circuit, K is AVI and this is AV. Okay. So this is what you actually observe because you're designing circuits with this thing. Uh, but K is actually kind of the amplifier characteristics. And so you can never get more than what the amplifier promises you. But the way we do math with these things is assuming that the gain is infinite. And so when we buy these things, we kind of have to be cognizant that the gain is actually not infinite. And so when we design the circuits, we want to make sure that the gain that we're actually trying to get is a lot smaller than the actual gain of the amplifier. And that's that's really the take-home message. I should have probably written it and read that the gain is not infinite, but as long as you ask for less than what it can give you, it behaves as infinite. That's all you need to know at this point. Is that clear to everyone? Cool. Okay, so there's an additional thing called common mode rejection, which the ratio, which the book mentions, but doesn't really go into depth about. But in particular, all of these amplifiers, what we want is this kind of gain where you have the differences of the input times the gain. Uh, but additionally, there's like kind of what we call the common mode gain. And as it turns out, the average or the sum of the two inputs are also amplified. And so this kind of acts as a kind of nuisance parameter because it's amplifying so if you put in half a volt, the gain is gonna be different than if you put 10 volts. So as you increase the voltages, you're gonna get this uh, extra additional gain factor, which is, is not good. And so in the data sheet, they'll probably, they'll have this common mode rejection ratio and that's exactly what it means. So this is to the extent that the book covers this. So I'm not gonna talk about it anymore because I, yeah, the, no, no. But I think that that's one of the main problems with the book. It has a lot of distractors. And uh, this is a distraction from what you should know. But I'm still covering because that's what I'm supposed to do. So it was covered. <laughs> okay. Okay, now, now there's another issue, which is called clipping. So just as before, when we did our MOS amplifiers, we know that we usually use our DC bias to amplify the time varying signal or the uh, small signal. Well, because we're using this DC bias, we're never gonna get more voltage out of this thing than the actual DC bias that we provide to it. So in this case, I have, when you actually buy these amplifiers, they're not three terminal devices, they're five terminal devices because you need two terminals for the DC. So you're gonna, this is what actually powers your device. And then if you were to connect those two terminals to negative five and positive five on the top, no matter what you do, your circuit will never exceed those voltages. Uh, and in particular is because it's using those DC bias to generate your amplification of the small signal. And so in this particular case, if you were to connect this one volt per volt signal to this circuit, which has a gain of negative 10, you, what you would expect to see is basically now the same signal uh, with reverse polarity, but with a, a 10 times factor amplification. But what you will actually see is that the signal never goes below negative five and never goes above five. And so we call that phenomena clipping, basically, that uh, at some point, if the predicted gain exceeds the DC bias, you're just gonna not get amplification beyond that. And so this is important, of course, to know, because if you're trying to get negative 10 volts and positive 10 DC volts, then you need to connect this to a negative 10 volt battery in a positive 10 volt battery. Um, and so you need to kind of be cognizant of this, that 
depending on what you expect to come out of the amplifier and the maximum voltages, that's how you choose these DC biasing points for the operational amplifier. Okay, so those are all the non-ideality things that you kind of need to know. Um, I will say that, you know, this circuit is simple enough where I think it's fair game for an exam. Uh, but the take home message from this lecture is really what I just said, that infinite is infinite as long as you ask for a low gain. That's like really all you really need to remember from this. Uh, but if if we throw you a circuit like this in an exam, I really wouldn't feel bad because it's just uh, three resistors and a dependent source. So I think it's a simple enough circuit that you should be able to solve at this point. Um, yeah. All right, let's uh, look at one more example and then basically I think that's all we have. So let's, we're gonna look at what we call the instrumentation amplifier. So when analyzing something like this, what we wanna do is actually break it up into stages. So what we're gonna do is basically first solve this circuit to figure out what the voltage will be here. And then we're gonna solve this circuit to figure out what the voltage is here. Uh, so in particular, we already know that the voltage here is going to be VI2, and the voltage here is going to be VI1. So now, now that we know that, how much current goes into these two circuits? Yeah, so no current flows into here, and no current flows into here. Um, so now we can actually... Uh, figure out what the V out will be. Uh, so what is the nodal equation here, basically? Wait. So remember that this is also connected to ground here. So sorry, this, so the nodal equation has two terms. So just to simplify, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just show you part of the circuit. So I'm just gonna basically take this circuit and I'm just gonna cut out this part of the circuit so that we can focus on this node. So now does anyone know what the, the nodal equation should be for this nodal equation? Yeah. yeah. So VI1 uh, divided by R1 plus VI1 minus VO1 divided by R2 equals zero. Can anyone tell me what the gain is at this point? So does this look sim similar to any of you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So this is a an inverting implied fire configuration. So if you look closely, uh, this is actually just uh, the same amplifier we solved in the first slide, except we flipped it around and we're just making it look different, but it's the exact same configuration. And the answer is actually yeah, V out one equals V I one divided by R one, which is equal R two over R one negative. Oh, wait, uh, is that correct? Oh, sorry, this is an inverting, this is a non-inverting amplifier. I apologize. You actually have to do the algebra. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got ahead of myself. You have to basically move this to the other side. So you move this to the other side and then you get VO2, VO1 divided by R2 equals VI1 times one over R1 plus one over R2. And then you multiply everything by R2. And so now you get that VO1 equals VI1 R1 over R, sorry, R2 over R1 
plus one. And that's your actual gain here, which is in the next slide, yeah. Okay, so now you have your gain for this. So now you know the voltage here. And uh, this turns out to be a non-inverting amplifier and the uh, gain is supposed to be this. So if you look closely, this configuration here looks exactly like the circuit that was given in your book. So you could also just pretty much look it up and then uh, based on that, get the answer. Go ahead. You had a question? Oh no. All right, so now let's look at the bottom one. What is VO2? Yeah, it's the exact same thing. So if you look closely, the two amplifier configurations look the same. Uh, you still you have the input on the plus side and uh, you have two resistances in between. And so you're gonna get the same nodal equation. And so as a result, you're gonna get that it's just gonna be one plus VOI two. So now you know what VO2 is and you know what VO1 is. So now you can actually deal with the next stage and the amplifier. So I just basically deleted the amplifier from here and I replaced it by the respective gain. So now I can move on to the next stage and now I just have to solve this additional amplifier here. And uh, so in particular, we have to do nodal analysis again. And so we're gonna get that, uh, and let's just write it in terms of VO1 because otherwise it's gonna become up and then we'll plug that in at the end because otherwise the equations will get just get insane. So here we're calling this VX. So it's just that uh, what's this current IR3 in terms of VX and VO1? Yeah, VX minus VO1 over R3 plus VX minus VO over R4 equals zero. So that's one equation. And then another equation we have here is that the uh, uh, how can we determine Vx in terms of VO2 using this uh, branch? Yeah, exactly. So basically here, just as you can recollect, no current goes into here. So whatever flows through here has to flow through there. And so you can just do voltage division. So you get that VO2 divided by... Oh, divided by R3 plus R4 times R4 equals Vx. So at this point, you're basically done. I, you have to do a little bit of algebra because you wanna get the, actually you don't have to do any algebra because you know expressions for VO2 and VO1. So you just plug this in for Vx here and here, and then you have an equation in VO2, VO1, and now you've related the inputs to the outputs. And uh, this shouldn't be Vx minus, this should be VO, sorry. Okay, that's better. So that's basically it. That's all you gotta do. And then you can solve this more complicated circuit. Uh, and here's kind of the derivation. It's a, uh, there's a bit of work to it, but you can actually get it down to be this here. So that's, uh, that's how you analyze kind of multi-stage amplifiers circuits. And I think I'm just gonna stop here at this point because uh, that's basically it. So just uh, for analyzing these things, you know, the key is to always, no current flows into here and the two terminals have the same voltage. And the majority of the, the uh, they just, the majority of these amplifiers break down. Are there any additional, go ahead. No, so this this uh, this amplifier here actually gives you quite a high gain. Um, and then because there's a, the multiple stages, actually it suppresses the problems that you get from common main common mode uh, from common mode uh, amplification. So there's the, the reason it's called instrumentation is because this configuration will actually give you very high quality gains. Um, 
So to give you an example of common mode uh, problems is if you're doing a biological measurement, you let's say you're trying to figure out what the voltage is as a function of time across a neuron. You're picking up a microvolt from your probe, but then you have to realize that there's lights. Those lights are generating radiation and that radiation is being picked up by your probe. The, the computer here has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and all kinds of other signals. Those are being picked up by your plot. And so when you're trying to measure very small signals, the environment is against you because the environment generates this uh, signals that are also picked up by those probes. But you're typically going to have two probes. You're going to have a positive probe and a negative probe. So what where you win there is that the same radiation that you get from the light on one probe is the same radiation that you get on the other probe. The same signal that you're gonna get from the Bluetooth, is the same one that gets the one probe and the other probe. And so all of this noise is typically common to both probes. And so the average of the signal that you pick up is actually the noise. So the common signal or is actually a measurement of noise. Whereas the difference in the signal, because the, the probes are so close to what you're actually trying to measure, that's actually really measuring the effects of that neuron. And so you want to reject the common stuff because the common stuff is basically noise. Um, and so that's why that common mode rejection thing is important. And when you connect the amplifiers in this way, you actually end up suppressing a lot of that common mode. And so that's why it's an instrumentation amplifier because it's known to be very good at picking differences between the two probes and ignoring kind of the environment, which is common to both probes. So yeah, but that's that, that's more of a application detail. Go ahead. The, as long as you what? Uh, not quite. Uh. Yeah, actually, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so you need to know that if the gain is negative, that thing is inverting. <laughs> if the gain is negative, it's inverting. If it's positive, it's not inverting. Like that, that's like a, but I mean, like it should be somewhat logical to you that you're inverting the voltage. So it's an inverting amplifier, but you don't need to memorize the topologies other than like the actual, the way the circuit looks. But if you solve a circuit and the gain turns out to be negative and we ask you what kind of amplifier this is, then you should know it. if it's positive, you should know it's non-inverting. If it's negative, it's inverting. Go ahead. Is, is what? What do you mean by flipping the signal? Yeah. Yeah, and people, what they'll do is they'll do what's called a voltage follower. So you just connect a negative plus, and then you you basically take your output and you just connect it to something that looks like this. And so that will effectively just change the sign. Are we expected to know variable names? So for example, if they're asking for input resistance, are we expected to know that that is usually named as RN? Uh, like what, if they ask for it, are you gonna say, what is RN or what is the input resistance? They'll say what is the input resistance. Okay. Yeah. Is there any way the uh... Noah? In the previous slide, I went over a capacitor example. Uh, 
they're online, so you, you might want to look at that. Actually, I went over two capacitor examples.